Yeah. Right. So, time starts when I press proceed. So, three, two, one. Um, so, this is Legend of K. It's, uh, you might not have heard of it because it's quite, it's not a very well known PS2 game made by a not very well known studio, Neon Studios. Um, but it's a really good game. I mean, casually it's fun, even though I didn't really play it casually very much. But as a speedrun, it's very, very good. I hope you'll see that. Um, this, uh, pretty much every level in this game is glitched. Um, it's this sort of game, the, the genre of this game is like a level by level platformer with lots and lots of combat. But we skip most of the combat in the speedrun, luckily, because I don't like combat in video games. Um, I'm not normally a speedrunner. I'm a glitcher. I find glitches in games, which is, might be, if, if you've heard of me, it's probably from glitching Zelda. But uh, I picked up this game as a glitching project, and I loved it, and I wanted to, wanted to speed run it because it's so broken. So hopefully I'll be able to show some of this stuff off to you. Um, so I guess I'll explain the whole mechanics of the game. You can skip every, almost every cutscene in this game, which is great, because uh, I hate cutscenes. <laughs> uh, you get a double jump, which is useful, you get a roll which doesn't really speed you up much but you can clip with it uh, and you have various attacks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go straight to the training fight. He's going to teach me how to use my sword and I'm just going to run away. Because there's a skip here found by Ruckmox that lets you just skip the whole, pretty much the whole level. If I can get it. There we go. Yeah, so there's this tiny rock there that you can just jump onto and it skips the whole level. And this is the final area in the level. Um, you just have a fight with the master that was supposed to just train me there. And it's supposed to be a two cycle, but it's slightly RNG, sometimes it doesn't work. This game isn't very RNG at all. Most of the time it's really good in terms of that sort of thing. Oh, I screwed up. That wasn't the game, that's my fault. It's still pretty quick, but quick though. Um, so there are going to be lots of tricks coming up pretty fast. So I should try and explain them. There are items in this game, and when you pick them up for the first time, you get text. Let's say you got this item, or whatever it is. Um, and I need those, and they only show up the first time you pick up an item. As long as you're not blocking when you pick up the item. Uh, I need those to do a glitch called Zombie K, which is... Well, I mean, I'll, I'll be getting it in a second. After First, there's a ball race course because bad PS2 games will have bad races in them. Um, but this gives me a good time to explain the glitches I, I guess. Um, yeah so in this game you have a health bar at the bottom. You might be sitting at the bottom right. It's the uh, three red squares. And there are four mag uh, magic squares above, the blue ones. But um, I can't use those yet. But the three red ones, that's my health. And if you notice when I have zombie K, those will be zero. And normally in this game, when you get hit down to zero health, you die. Just, it voids you out, all the game over screen comes up, depending on how many lives you have. Um, but if you actually fall onto an item during the death animation, for the first time, so it brings up that text box, you've got this item, then it will allow you to continue running around with zero hearts, and it will have some really strange effects, which I'll show you in a minute. Uh, so we use that a lot in this run, but it's not just one glitch in the game. There are lots of glitches, and there are lots of places to clip. It's really strange. The game developers seem to pick and choose which games, which levels they were going to test or make properly, because some you can clip everywhere, and some, like this one, you just can't seem to clip in many places at all. So I'm going to get my first item in the game, which is the bombs, and I need to preserve the text box so that I can use it later for Zombie K. So what I'm going to do is just block with my sword. There's a bomb respawn point here. It's hard to see because the camera is not showing you, but uh, there will be bombs infinitely spawning here. And so I'm just going to keep blocking to collect all these bombs without the text box showing up so that I can get it later. So this is the key I need for this level. Unfortunately, this level isn't broken the first half of it yet. I'm also going to save. These are the save statues. They automatically save your progress. Um, so there are a few instances of Zombie K where if I screw them up, 
Um, if I screw them up, then it's bad because I don't have that text box, so I can't just try again like on the same uh, session, I guess. So I'd have to load a save file from when I hadn't had the text box. Um, and so that's the coin. But I'm going to do it with this magic coin. The, that was the text box you just saw there. I need my sword out. It gives me a visual cue. Let's try that. Okay, I got it. So you saw, like, he was starting to fall over there, and then he fell onto the magic uh, point, or I don't know what they're called. I should actually read the text box one day. Um, and yeah, so that gives me zombie K, and there's a log section here. These logs are supposed to be hurting me. <laughs> I have zombie K, so I can just run through them, it doesn't matter. It makes this section very easy. You don't take any damage while you have this glitch, which we call zombie K. Also, another thing that happens, for whatever reason, you can't start cutscenes. So there's supposed to be a big cutscene here, you walk in and then a fight starts and all the gates close, but that cutscene can't play, so we just walk straight out again. No fights here. I'm going to try to read little bits of chat here and there, but this is a very fast-paced game. And I uh, can't promise anything. I guess while I'm talking about stuff in the early game, I should mention the actual community for this game. Um, and the way it works is I... It was originally me, Serpin, and Rockmox was working on this game as a glitching project, and I loved the game. And so me and Rockmox wrote up a huge Google Doc of all the glitches, and then a bit later on, well, two years later actually, about a couple of months ago, a few months ago, um, a couple of people were doing that 12-hour challenge. You know the speedrunning 12-hour challenge thing? Uh, and they found my notes, and they thought this would be a great game to do for the 12-hour challenge. It turns out they could never actually beat it, because we only rooted the first half of the game. But they contacted me, and I, it gave me uh, motivation to pick up this game again. And uh, we actually started speedrunning it, and it's pretty good, it's really competitive. So those guys were Muffin42 and MASH. And, uh, oops. You should probably pay attention. <laughs> and then a bit later on, someone called Robbie, or Epic Dude, Dude Guy, you might know him as. He's a Prince of Persia, stands a time runner. He joined in, and he, he found a lot of tricks in this game. I found quite a lot as well. For instance, I found the trick you just saw in that last forest. Um, there's one in this next one that Unreal found, I think. But yeah, I mean, I'll be explaining all the tricks as they come up. This level's not very glitched, unfortunately. Um, I should probably actually explain the category, because this isn't any percent. This is any percent RLC, which means real level completions, which is a really stupid name, but whatever. Um, in any percent, well, I guess I should say, in every level of this game, there's an out of bounds level end trigger. It's just floating out of bounds somewhere. And so any percent is just clip out of bounds as quick as you can, and then float to that end trigger. And it's just that, every level you just float to the end, and it's really boring. So RLC, real level completions, is what I'm doing, where we have to actually reach the level end trigger, you know, the, the normal level end trigger, like completing the main quest, or whatever it is. So the main quest in this one is to get to the other side of a bridge, but the bridge is broken, so you have to get um, three of these red gems, and then put them in three stat statues that are placed all over the map. This is the longest level. And I'm doing a mini game here to get an extra magic container because I've only got four magic at the moment. Oh, no. That was bad. I still did it though. I've only got four magic. This is going to be my fifth. And when you have five magic, you can actually use magic attacks. I was supposed to have five magic already at the start, at the end of the next. Uh, uh, sorry, the end of the first level. But I skipped most of the first level. And I skipped most of the second level too. So. This is the least glitched level, but we still do stuff. And it's also the, I think I already said this, I think it's, I said it's the longest. This is, I think, I'm not sure how many minutes, maybe eight minutes? In any percent, it skips all of it. So quick in any percent. I'm gonna try and get an extra 
bomb and berserk potion. I've got two extra bombs, so I'm gonna drop one. I just need a berserk, which is these gold potions. I got one earlier in the second level. They double your attack strength for a short period of time. Which is really useful because it means you can one cycle certain bosses, or two cycle them if they're more they're stronger. And you can also just make fights in general a lot easier. I don't need this Berserk Potion from the pots. It's an RNG drop, and if I don't get it, it's fine. It just means that one of my uh, fights later is a bit more annoying and slower. But some people don't, some of the runners don't get the one that I get, so... I mean, it's completely up to the runner, I guess. So you may notice I'm going around specifically to collect a lot of coins. And that's because there are shops in this game uh, and there are useful things to buy. Um, so some things that we need to buy throughout the game, we need a lot of bombs first of all, not only to kill us but for Zombie K but for other reasons as well. Uh, you have like this, for example, blowing up walls. Um, we also need to buy, at the end of this level, I need to buy a blue potion, a mana potion, because it's another item that I can just drop any time and then pick up and get a text box from, which is really useful because it means you can get zombie K pretty much anywhere you like. It's the same with the health potions. I was waiting for that guy because he can sometimes be annoying. So I'll be using that in quite late in the game. I'll be buying a blue potion very early and using it very late. That was actually kind of close. So I'm getting the animals in the cages. There's another cage up here because they give you money. And the more you get on the level, the more each one gives you. So the first one gives you 20, I think, this one, then 50, and then 100. So you get a lot of money from that. And we need a lot of money early game because we want to buy the sword upgrade. We, um, we actually kind of skip most of the intended upgrades in this game. So you're supposed to get a lot of sword upgrades on the way, they're just laying around and you have to do some side quest for some of them. But the shops also sell them in case you miss them. And we almost always, I mean, there's pretty much no chance of us getting any of the upgrades, they're so far away. So we can just buy them in the shop, which is a lot better. And it's a lot quicker to get money on the way than it is to actually do the side quest to get the item upgrades. <laughs> this game is a rip off of Zelda. I don't know, Zelda can't jump like this. Zelda can't double jump. It's a rip-off of every PS2 pla bad PS2 platformer. Oh yeah, I just did a trick and I didn't even explain it. Uh, <laughs> there are, you're supposed to do a big fight to get around the cave, but um, I didn't do that. I just jumped over the vines, because they made a spot where you can actually stand on those vines whatever reason. Okay, I got another berserk. I can read chat when I'm not busy, which is not often. This is, oh yeah, I should probably explain that as well. No, this is the PS2 version. Um, this came out like 11 years ago, or 10 or something. The anniversary edition, well, it must have been 10, because the anniversary edition came out quite recently for, I think, PC, PS3, PS4, and Wii U. I think that's it. That was... Sometimes enemies can just block you for no reason. I don't like the fights in this game. That's why I'm glad we skipped most of them. I'm actually in a quite a dangerous position here. Because I've only got one health left. There's only one bear though. Alright, that was actually kind of close that fight, but I did it. You can just die in these fights. It's not unheard of, like sometimes in my runs I just die to a random fight. It usually doesn't happen. Uh, yeah, um, I don't know if I finished what I was saying about Anniversary. Anniversary came out recently and it's pretty much the same game. There are some differences. One of the glitches doesn't work, but none, like, you can do this route 
You could do this run on anniversary. Unfortunately, text is slower as well. But I mean, I think anniversary probably would be quicker to run on. But we just consider it a different game. In the community, we've just got them as separate games: PST version and anniversary version. And so all the competition is on PST. So this is it. This is the end of the level. <coughs> Excuse me. So this is the longest level in the game, and now the rest of them are going to be significantly shorter. I just need to put the last gem in this statue to complete the bridge. So in case you missed it, because I was skipping the cutscenes, it's very hard to see. I had to get three gems and then place them in three statues, that's why I went to the different corners of the map. And the exit of the level is here. just a really linear level. There's no real skips in this because it's just walking in a straight line. It's just an introduction to more difficult platforming. But there's a lot of money in this cave, luckily, because we need it in the exact next level. We need 600 coins. And you see me when I'm breaking pots, I'm like blocking like that. Um, it's because if it, it does drop a certain item, like a bomb, I want to preserve the text box. <coughs> That was close. I didn't mean to do that. <coughs> I'm kind of choking talking a lot. Hey Rocky. That's alright. This is a fun run. It's pretty fun here. <coughs> Sorry if my coughing's loud. <laughs> this is another level where I go out of bounds and pretty much skip everything. But first I've got to buy a sword upgrade. Actually, I say that, but I don't think you've seen Out of Bounds yet. This is what it looks like. It's very confusing. Yeah, the, the textures actually load based on the camera, not on my position, which is really annoying. It means I have to not only be good at controlling K, but be con good at controlling the camera so that the map actually loads. I mean, it's not a bad way of doing it, but it's annoying the speedrunning. Yeah, the collision is always there on the maps, but the textures sometimes aren't. The 
this, that I like skip some platforming, but it's really annoying because this thing's spinning and you've got to try and get up on it while it's while it's spinning. And this is the end of that level, so I think you'll see most of the levels are pretty quick from now on. And very buggy as well. So there's another new trick coming up in this next one. Um, and it's called swamp slashing. In the next level you start to see uh, swamp, I don't know, like swamp mud. It's supposed to be like quicksand. You go in it and you, you kind of die soon. You get stuck in it. And you can't go across it. You have to platform your way across it. But um, I didn't realize that you could just sword slash the wrong way. <laughs> sword slash and it doesn't suck you in. So I'm just going to sword slash straight to the end of the level. There's one fight there. This is like the only chill time in runs where you just got to mash the attack button for 20 seconds. <laughs> I have some water here actually. I kind of just don't want to disrupt the microphone. There's one annoying fight here. In fact, this is probably the most annoying fight in the game because they drop bombs at you which do two hearts of damage and you can just randomly die if you get two unlucky hits. Luckily the bombs can actually damage the rats as well, so they can help you out. Like that one just killed that rat there. Some people use extra items just to do this fight, which is annoying. I think Robbie does that. See, that bomb just killed pretty much all the enemies <laughs> so quick. So it can help you out a lot as well. This is a really good fight. Uh, I need a... Oh wait, I've got a bomb. <laughs> I picked an extra bomb up earlier, so I didn't need that one. That's good. That was really good. That was probably a gold split. <laughs> if I had splits, that would be a gold split right now. So this is supposed to be the longest level in the game, um, but it's not. <laughs> it's also supposed to have the most annoying section in the game called Frog City, but we skipped that. Luckily that was one of the first things we skipped. So you need two key parts to beat the level. And one's in this place called Crocodile Temple, which I'm going first, and one's in this place called uh, Turtle Fort. Sorry, <laughs> I wasn't supposed to fall in there. And I fell in again. I was going to take it the slow way. Yeah, one's in a place called Cro Crocodile Temple, one's in a place called Turtle Fort. We skipped the interior of pretty much most of the, uh, sorry, both of them, but um, we still actually have to go into them and get the key parts in this category. In RLC, obviously, you don't, you just float to the end. Uh, this also introduces the idea of like sub levels. I'm not sure actually any other level has sub levels, but it, it actually has a loading trigger for the sub levels. Um, this is RLC, so we're not allowed to hit the loading triggers to actually complete levels, but we can do it to get into the sub-levels, to get in and out of sub-levels, which is what I'm going to do for this one, so that I don't have to do the side quest to open it. So the, luckily I don't need to float really far across the map, because the load trigger is like just at the back of here. Oh, <laughs> failed the clip. Let's try that again. Oh no. Stage shouting is going to start again. So that I just hit the load trigger. They're just all stored out of bounds like that. And I'm going into uh, Croc Temple. And this is where I use my extra Berserk that I picked up earlier. Just because it makes the fight easier. There are enemies with a lot of uh, armor here. And armor's annoying. They can't block as well if you use this potion. And these enemies are some of the ones that like to block a lot. But it's nice to have them not be able to block. This is a pretty hard trick coming up as well. This is one of the hardest tricks, I'd say, in the, in the run. It's not the hardest. The hardest is... I don't know, well, you'll, you'll see at the time. I'll explain this one for now. So, I'm gonna get Zombie K. There's a key chest here. 
So I'm gonna hit the key chest and then die by a bomb. And then the key's gonna fly out and hit me and give me zombie K, which is that glitch I was talking about earlier where cutscenes can't play. And so because cutscenes can't play, this exit level cutscene can't play. And uh, I go back to part of the map that they didn't even bother making collision for because it's supposed to be behind a cutscene trigger. Uh, and I have to do some kind of tricky platforming. And then... Okay, I got it. Nice. So that was half of the key there. What I actually, what I did there, in case you were confused, there's a plane of water here. Normally you have to go through the whole level and lower that water bit by bit by hitting switches. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's still a zombie key. I need to get a heart to stop zombie key. Which, luckily there are hearts in this, the chest next to this one. Um, yeah, I have zombie K, so I get around there and jump under the water plane so that I can actually get to the bottom and pick up the key without doing the whole dungeon. Which is nice. There's one fight in it. There's one fight in this whole level, which is great because it's normally a, lots of fights in this level if you play it casually. Now it's just going to get to, I'm just going to be getting to Turtle 4. Skipping pretty much all of inside Turtle Fort and then beating the level. Oops. I'm also going to be picking up some armor here. Uh, it's just useful. I mean, it's not really needed. A Tass wouldn't get it. But since we only have four hearts in this whole run and you're supposed to have like eight by now, it's just a lot, use a lot more useful. Um, the way armor works in this game is it's like a... It's like an extension to your health bar, but then once it's gone, you, it doesn't come back. So it's like a one-time use thing. Oh, wait. I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> For example, is this way. I mean, turn the floor. I thought that looked a bit weird. I was a bit confused there. It's because it's not the route. There's a trick coming up here called Cheeky Tree Strats that was invented by MASH. Where you jump on this tree to speed it up. It's good. It's cheeky. Oh. That was another strat I didn't need to do because I already got a health potion. I keep making kind of stupid mistakes just from not thinking, but the execution is fine, so I'm not really complaining. It's just me trying to think about what to explain, so I feel like I'm missing things. The execution so far in this run has actually been pretty much perfect, so this is a really good run. So my estimate for this, uh, for this run, for the marathon run, Insomnia, is 110. Uh, my PB is 1... no, it's, sorry, it's 58 minutes, 55 seconds. But I know I can get a sub-55 time if I just get a good run. So, I mean, I'm not expecting this to be sub-55, but... The, only, the thing is, there's one trick which is the hardest trick in the game, and it's completely execution, it's not RNG at all. Uh, and it can just fail a lot <laughs> if you're bad, or if you're not used to it, your fingers aren't warmed up. It's a one clip followed by two really precise jumps. But we'll see when we get there. That's in like two levels time, I think. Three, maybe. So this is the second key part. I skipped an elevator section earlier. You might have seen me like jumping on walls because the developers decided to put some floor on the walls for some reason. Which is great for us. But that skips the only fight that you actually need to do in this one. This is like a short mini dungeon. I've got more coins than I usually do, I don't know why, but I'm not complaining. I usually have about 950 here, but 1019 is fine with me. So I've got everything I need now, I just have to go to the level end, like the... I have to go to the bit where you're supposed to use the key to end the level. <laughs> okay, when I say the execution's been perfect, I mean the big tricks. The wall bunks are obviously not great. I 
don't know if you can all hear the crowd behind me. Oh, well, that you probably can. They're of course, of course all cheering for my run. <laughs> Um, next, coming up next is the first boss in this run. There was supposed to be one in that level earlier where I went out of bounds and skipped it all, but I went out of bounds and skipped it all, so. But we turned this one from like a four cycle into a two cycle with one of the berserk potions I was talking about earlier, which doubles your attack. So this is the end of the level. Oops. <laughs> Should be. There we go. So this is a, a, a turtle boss. It's pretty easy. I shouldn't screw up. But I may do, but just because it's a marathon run. You know, what those are like. Oh yeah, there's another thing I should mention. Very occasionally, this game randomly voids you out for no reason. It's not even related to glitches. It will just randomly do it. It will happen in a casual playthrough. And it really rarely happens. But since I got here, it's happened like four times during practice. So I'm kind of worried it's going to happen now. So that was a that was a fight, two cycle, really easy. Pre-recorded hype, yeah. It's like one of those laughter tracks, but it's like a hype track instead. Um, this is a really annoying level. We do it com the complete casual way. It's just a flight level, so you know how I had the ball race earlier? This one's like a dragon flight, and it's really annoying. It's one of the reasons we actually get this armor, because there are mines everywhere, and if you get hit by one, you lose health. And if you get down to zero health, then you can't, like, you have to start again. And it's just really annoying. You'd think that we'd be really good at it by now, speedrunning this game all the time, but it's just, we just still can't do it. Especially fast, there's like a dash button, and so we just spam the dash button to try and go fast all the time. But everyone that runs this game screws this up sometimes. You also can't miss any rings, and if you get hit then you can't move for like 5 seconds, so it's very easy to miss rings. Okay, 5 seconds is probably a bit of an overestimation, but after you get hit you can't move, so it makes it very annoying. I'm going to slow down here. I don't normally do this, but I want to make sure I actually complete this level for the marathon. That was close. I almost missed that gate. Oh, I mean, ring. The handling on the dragon is not very good. Speaking of pre-recorded tracks, there's this guy that keeps telling everyone to chant Insomnia on the main stage just behind us. Every day. It's getting really old. I don't know if you can see, but behind me there's like this big black curtain, and just behind there there's like a massive stage. There's lots of noise. So I only took one hit during that flight, which is really good. It means I've got four armor left for this level. And this is the level where we try and skip everything, but there's still one fight. This is the hardest trick in the game in here. Forty rings. <laughs> yeah, this game was inspired by Sonic. So this is a city, which means it has lots of rooftops, which means it's great for out of bounds, as you'll soon see. Hopefully, <laughs> if I can get this straight. This is like really precise, but it shouldn't take too long to get. I think in Mash's first PB, he was stuck at this for like five minutes. I hope that doesn't happen to me. I'm pressing the attack button too early. Very unusual. I normally get this at least third try, maybe latest. Oh, 
Come on. Choking. Finally. So yeah, that's a... Um, I don't know what that's called. It's like you do an attack and then you land on a slope and you can jump off the slope. But you're not normally supposed to jump off slopes. So we use that to get out of bounds. And a lot of this is learning the camera maneuvering to try and load the map. It's not, it's not just platforming, it's knowing where to put the camera. Right, this is the hardest trick in the game. I should have explained it, but I was trying to listen to Flecky. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I clip out of bounds in one house and jump into another house, which happens to be loaded right next to it. Uh, I failed it. Well, that gives me more time to explain it. So in, in this map, there are houses, and they're all actually all stored technically on the same map, just in different positions. So all this going through this door does is like move me to some other coordinate in the map where a house happens to be loaded. And all the houses are really close to each other. Um, so, this is a level that you visit twice. This is the only level in the game that you visit twice. You visit the first time and do some quests, then do some levels, then you come back here and do some other quests. But what we do in the speedrun is just do the second quests first. But that required... Oh, I almost like had it there, but... I mean, like I said, this is the hardest trick in the game, so I don't, I don't ever expect to get it first try. It's a surprise when I get it first try. But it saves 10 minutes, so as long as I don't waste 10 minutes here, <laughs> then I'm technically doing good. Um, yeah, so we visit it twice, normally in the casual playthrough, but in the speedrun, we visit it once and get to the second part of the town early. But the only way to get to the second part of the town early is to jump from one of the houses in this part to a house in the other part. It's very technical, and I had to, I had to basically go on an emulator and find the coordinates of all the houses and work out which ones were near to each other. That should have worked. Well, it didn't, so obviously I am doing something wrong, but... I don't like blaming the game when it's completely my fault. <laughs> And this little trick is pure execution, there's no RNG. It's always my fault if I fail it. Oh, I clicked back out. So this is just the first part, this is just the clip bit. Then there's two really hard jumps after this. Alright, so that was the first hard jump to get up here. And the other house is just behind this wall that I'm like inside right now. Let's see if I can get this last hard jump. I got it. Okay, nice. That was the hardest trick. <laughs> so yeah, you jump from one house to another. And uh, you jump through a lady's window from out of bounds. And she's very surprised. But it skips like five levels. They're all really short levels, but they, we skip them. So I mean, it's good. I would rather they be long levels that we skip, but you know. Can't choose. Can't be picky. Um, I need to buy something. I don't need to buy that. <laughs> There's a bus coming up. There's a bus coming up which uh, has a lot of health. And so we need to use two berserk potions to kill it quickly. It also has really long cycles, so our potions run out quick. So this is the one fight we have to do. Unfortunately, with all the out of bounds there are on this level, there's one house that we just can't get into. Uh, it's the house you need to get into to end the level. So we have to do this fight to open up that house. All we need is some out of bounds that's, that's there, but we've all looked so much and we can't find one. It's like the one place in the game you can't get, uh, sorry, in the level that you can't get, and it happens to be the one we need to get to. Whoops. I've also got armor here, which is really helpful, because these gorillas can be a pain sometimes. Um, 
anyone have any questions? I think I've explained most of it, but I probably haven't, so. <laughs> I do have, I do keep glancing at chat. I might miss a question, but hopefully I won't. Uh, I suppose to use my magic attack. There you go. It's like a charge up time on the magic attack, so you need to make sure you're not going to get hit within the next five seconds before you start charging it up. It is pretty good, especially once you have the best weapon in the game, which we buy later. Magic pretty much just kills everything instantly. Alright. Good fight. So that unlocks, that makes these things. I'm sure that unlocks the thing. The world record is 58-55, but it's very improvable. I'm going to save the game here. I don't normally do this, um, but if I die on this boss, then it reverts to its nightmare mode health bar for some reason. So I, I'm saving here so that I can avoid that. If I die, I can just re reload. That's like wasted a few seconds, but I don't care. I mean, it's just safety because it's a marathon. So the boss, the trick of the boss is weird. You have to like go onto the roof here and then jump back down again, and then he comes out. And I need a high combo. I haven't explained combo yet, I don't think. When you kill enemies or destroy their armor, you get a combo. And the higher your combo, the stronger your attacks. So to two cycle this guy, I need a combo of six, uh, sorry, a combo of five, and then a combo of 15 on the second phase. Also, when you have a combo, any combo, you can quick move to enemies. So I can press triangle and like, zoom across and like hit enemies. Um, and those. It works for those wooden things as well that you saw me earlier jumping to. Alright, that's it, two cycle. That's good. It helped the head armor. I turned subtitles off. Whoops. I need those on so shops can be quick. Basically, we glitched the Legend of K a long time ago. It was just a glitching project. It's just what a bunch of us did for fun, because I'm a glitcher mainly, that's what I do. Um, and so there were no speedruns forever, just because only glitches were working in this game. And then I made a Google document about two years ago, and recently somebody picked it up and saw it. Uh, you know the 12 hour speedrunning challenge? I can't remember who made it, it was probably Golden or someone, I don't know. Um, so they, they wanted to run this for the 12 hour speedrunning challenge because we had all, they had all my notes. And so they picked it up and they contacted me while I was at ESA actually. And I couldn't help them at the time, but uh, this is bad. <laughs> I just realized I need to get my health lower. <laughs> supposed to do when I, <laughs> when I jet up this bomb here. I should probably pick up that as well. Again, I have to block while picking it up so the text box doesn't come up. Ah, alright, fine. Just... I'll work out something. I need to buy the hammer here. It makes fights pretty quick. I was supposed to get it in one of those levels I skipped. Uh. Alright, I'm going to have to do something really slow, unfortunately. I'm going to have to go all the way back here for a bomb drop. I wasn't paying attention to what I had, what items I had, and I picked up a bottle of Hornets by accident instead of a bomb, which confused me. So there's a bomb respawn point here, but it's fine. It didn't waste much time. Um, so I. 
We're going to use Zombie K again in a minute. That glitch where you have zero health and it stores cutscenes and stops damage. But when you heal yourself out of Zombie K, cutscenes will play. Any cutscene that you've stored will play. And the thing about this game is you normally have an air meter when you're swimming and once that runs out you drown. But I can store a cutscene and then heal myself while I'm in the water and it will play the cutscene. And all cutscenes uh, restore your air meter to full. So the skip in this, this beach level is literally just swim all the way around because we can do that with an extended air meter. Oh. <laughs> what? Alright. I'm gonna have to retry that. That was, I'm not sure what happened there. Yeah, thanks, Robbie. I noticed I got full health. I realised afterwards. <laughs> Just ignore this. Just pretend this level didn't happen, okay? I'll still be within estimates, fine. But that means I gotta go all the way over there and get that bomb again. Sorry, guys. I let you down. I let you down. Maybe this. <laughs> I think yeah, yeah. Maybe this will help. Well, this will give me time to answer any questions if anyone has any. But I'm gonna save again. I'm gonna take some damage this time. Yeah, record record. Oh well. You know what? The funny thing is, I might even be able to still get world record. Probably not. I kind of doubt it, but... but... This has been a really good run so far. My favourite glitch... is probably Zombie K, the one you see a lot. Because... First of all, I found it. <laughs> so I have like a soft spot for it. And also, I like the idea that you can still cut scenes. Oh, whatever. Anyway, I... There's a cutscene that still that plays normally when you kill all these enemies, so that's what I'm going to do now. Just throw a cutscene. These birds are possible to combo to. There's a lot of money on the beach, which is great because we need to buy the best sword upgrade soon. Or oh, best hammer upgrade, I mean. So I'm just going to swim around and skip everything the first half of this beach. And then I'm going to use a red potion to heal myself, which will play a cutscene and refill my air meter, which you see on the left there. <laughs> no, I never feel like a casual. I never play games casually, I'm sorry. I get bored of games casually. You know, I've never actually beaten this game casually. There are levels where I have no idea what you're supposed to do. Because I just skip them all straight away. That's why it's a glitching project, I guess, not a childhood game that I loved. I just picked it up from some game store. Worst bit of the level. It's just platforming, which I should be good at, but I'm not. Uh, oh, I only got four combo. Whoops. Just gotta get lots of money because for the late levels we need a lot of money. I'm going to skip some of the platforming here if I can. <laughs> I 
That was kind of scary. I did it though. <laughs> yeah, K, I don't know if you've noticed, but K, it looks pretty similar to Cool Cat. So, that's our thing. Cool K. Oh, yeah, there's another section. It's alright, this bit's easy. I completely forgot that there was a section. And I've been speedrunning this game every day for the past, like, two weeks. It's just because you don't need to think about this section. There's another cat um, in this game, which is like the main character's girl, that you can probably see in the end cutscene. <laughs> and she's basically cat bag. So it's basically like K is cool cat, and Su Ling, which is the cat at the end, is cat bag. She's the thing. I keep turning the subtitles off. I'm pressing X, so I don't know why. So this is the level where we buy the best weapon in the game. But there's only two fights after this anyway, because like I say, we skip most of the fights in this game. But it's still worth getting it. Also for the final boss. Oh, I need to buy a bomb as well. Fight. Oh, <laughs> I shouldn't have bought that. It's okay. I just realized I need to pick up a red potion later, and I can't if I've got five items. But that's okay. Bombs are really, really cheap in this game, so... Hi, everyone who's saying hi. <laughs> I can't quite read your names in time. Oh, wait. This isn't a strat. Oops. <laughs> let's try this again. Actually, let's just kill everything. Oh, wait, I'm dead. Okay, let's try again. That's how you're supposed to do it. Just kill everything with magic. There's another big level skip that was found actually after I gave my estimate for this game. Um, I'm just gonna get this money here. I don't need it, but it's good to be safe. So there's supposed to be a boss fight here, but um, the weird thing about the, the way they made this game is some levels they really tried hard to stop you from going out of bounds, and uh, some of them, well, I don't think they even looked. I've got to land on this really tiny bit of ground and stay out of bounds. Okay, oh, <laughs> I clipped in bounds. It's okay, I can just try it again. This trick isn't that hard. The thing, one of the things I like about this game is it's pretty much pure execution. There's no, there's no real RNG that you need to worry about. So it means when the run's bad, it means you're bad, which means you can improve. The reason this is happening is just because I'm bad. Just to explain that. There we go, I got it. Oh yeah, <laughs> I need to drop my bomb. This is the Donkey Kong section. Um, we're assuming that we, we think they might have changed. Basically, the NTSC version of the game came out after the PAL version because it was a German studio that made this. Game. I'm playing the PAL version, but there are NTSC differences. Like, the Ninja Turtles aren't green in NTSC, they're brown, for some reason. Must have infringed some sort of copyright somewhere, and I can't think what. And I think the gorillas are different as well. <laughs> hey, you don't want my name, alright? I made it when I was 12. I was so angry that I couldn't comment on YouTube videos without an account. to take some damage here so I can do another zombie kit. So this is the one you can do anywhere with the blue potion that you just dropped. 
And uh, yeah, so no, well, not only do I not take damage, I skip like three massive fights. There's one here, and there's another one coming up, and there's a small one. I, I guess it's two big fights and one small fight. So there's supposed to be a small fight like here ish. But again, the, all the fights create the barriers when you enter them, so if you don't trigger the cutscene for them, none of the barriers will be there, you can just walk straight through them. Oh yeah. So that that triggers a cutscene which is actually just gonna put me here. Because it, it combines loads of cutscenes when you do that. And so I want to make sure it puts me in the right place after all the cutscenes finish. Uh, I don't know what they're cheering about, but I hope it's my game. Why are they saying zombie K? Because uh, the crowd are saying zombie K. Oh, <laughs> they're saying zombie K. They are saying zombie K. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fine. If you guys want, I'll do a zombie K. Just to please the crowd. I mean, I wasn't going to do it, but I might as well now. There is a switch here, which opens a door, and you're supposed to push this block onto it. But then when you leave the switch... Wait. I need to get in a good position here. Uh, that might be bad, let's see. No, I got it. Okay, so you stand on the switch, it opens the door, you leave the switch, it closes the door, so you're supposed to put a block on it. But I get Zombie K while standing on the switch, so the door can't close, because the cutscenes can't play. And also, because I have Zombie K, I can uh, walk on lava. Also, Blaze Valley is really short, this is the section called Blaze Valley. So this isn't normal, you're not normally supposed to be able to run on lava like this. This is Zombie K. Zombie K. This section is normally so annoying because there are so many things throwing bombs and rocks at you. But if you have zombie cake, you can just run straight through it. I can't get sub one anymore, but I should be like way underestimate. If well, I don't want to jinx it, but. <laughs> Super long fight here that we have to do, unfortunately. But we haven't found a clip into the door over there yet. But it's okay, we get a lot of money for it. I'm doing this fight too well. I need to lose all my armor by the end of this fight. And I keep not getting hit. I need to get hit a bit more. That's better. Unfortunately, this fight's too hard to enter it with full health. But it's slightly too easy to be worth, to, you know, to justify. And we get the armor, but we have to then take loads of hits to waste it, it's kind of slow. You kind of get punished for doing well in this fight because then you have loads of armor left and it's really slow to get rid of it. So I'm just going to get hit a bunch of times, if I can. Probably get down to th yeah, three armor and then I'll just kill everything and things will naturally hit me, I think, as I die. I mean, as I kill them. <laughs> Yeah, so that's one hit out of the three. Also, I can take one hit of damage pretty quickly just outside the exit, so I don't need to completely get rid of my armor. Just if these guys hit me. I don't know. 
some tiny German studio made this game and it's amazing and I really like it. I've actually only met like two people that have actually played this game. I have way too much money as well, I didn't need that much. Oh well. So, oh yeah, uh, it's not, I really shouldn't stop the run to show you that. <laughs> That was just the cat that looks like cat bag. I really enjoy explaining things, so I'm always really tempted just to sacrifice some time to explain something extra or to show you guys something. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to be really underestimated anyway, so... Well, I'd say really, maybe like five minutes. This is the penultimate level and it's really short. And then the last level is just a boss fight. So this is the, I think this is the, yeah, it's the last Zombie K in the game coming up. So say your goodbyes to Zombie K. I might do another glitch showcase next ESA, I'm not sure. It depends. I'll do something, I, I don't know what. So, last zombie K of this key chest. And apparently whoever tested the collision in this level didn't get zombie K, because I mean, you can just click here, it's lazy testing. You just gotta get zombie K and run on the lava. Anyway, I have Zombie K, so I can just run through all these fights. So this is the ammunition depot. Pretty intense in here. Oh, and some explosive barrels. I better watch out. And then a little platforming section. It's really difficult platforming. Now finally we're at the last line of defence, which is apparently is a door, and that's the end of the level. And now we're on the final bus. I'm going to buy armour just because I, I can afford it. I don't need it, I can kill this boss without taking any hits. But if I do take hits, it's nice to have armour. Actually, I think I can afford an extra berserk. No, I can't. <laughs> so this boss has uh, three phases. Phase one is like an insta-kill. Phase two and three are both two cycles. I shouldn't be able to get the phase one thing. It's not too difficult. you just got to get used to the timing. Yeah, so that's the phase one. <laughs> Again, the, we have the best weapon in the game, so it's extremely powerful. And we just combo around these things, dodging all the final bosses' attacks. Uh, because we're in easy mode, these are all wooden, they only take one hit to break. In any other mode, they're like long, they take longer to break for more hits. Uh, what's this one? He like clones himself, and one of them has like a more red chest. But luckily this TV is really, really good, so I can see really easily. Alright, that's that one. So that's phase one. Oh. Lots of lag, I don't know why. And i got to split in a second while I'm killing this boss. Like, I'm just about to finish the run. Nice. 104.47. <laughs> That's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. 
Oh, hopefully I showed that off quite well. Happy with that run. And now we got, what is it, Silent Hill next? Everyone stay around for Silent Hill. So I'm just going to turn my mics off, yeah. <laughs> 